So in this tutorial, we're going to be learning about the T3 mesh generator, which is different from the T3 channel mesh generator. Uh, the T3 mesh generator is used to produce the actual mesh that's going to be used uh, in Telemac uh, when we do the hydrodynamic modeling and a couple more videos. Uh, so to begin with, what you want to do is go to new, just click on the T3 mesh generator here. Uh, again, we're presented with this um, this property box where we can change this into uh, the name of it to Baxter Mesh or Baxter Tutorial Mesh uh, with underscores between the names and then just click apply. Uh, we're going to leave resample outline checked. We're also going to leave uh, the edge growth ratio of 1.2 for the moment and we're going to change the default edge length to 50. Um, and then we're just going to go apply OK. Uh, so again, it's similar to a T3 channel mesh generator. You have to specify certain elements of it in order for the mesher to work. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is get our outline. So we'll just click the uh, click and drag the Baxter outline onto outline here. So you can see that that kind of uh, that sign goes away. And then also what we want to do is drag in the individual channel meshers onto the sub meshers here. So you can see when we do that, they appear below. Uh, just drag all three of them on, so for the Thule Creek, Baxter, as well as the Levy, and into Submesh, and then click on Baxter Tutorial Mesh again, go to the, do a right click on it, and then go into Properties, and then we're just gonna, we're just gonna run it, uh, with these values, and I'll show you what that gives. Uh, so this actually runs pretty quickly, and we're gonna make a mesh for the entire domain. Uh, sometimes it can be a little bit slow here at the end, uh, just, doing all the necessary processes, and then just go OK, click Apply, go click OK, and then just drag and drop that onto here. So what we're going to do is, well, here you can see that the mesh has been created, which is kind of nice, and you can see that we're also, the nodes where they connect with the levee here, you can see that the mesher has gone and basically made it so that uh, there's an element from each of these, uh, the outs, like the, the main mesh that attaches to each of the vertices on the levee. So the, the levee spacing was a lot closer. I think it was 10 meters uh, along its, uh, along the channel, whereas in the Baxter River, it was every 50 meters. So you can see that it snaps to those points there. Um, so we'll just take that off of the 2D view and then just go into Properties again, and we'll name this, go into Metadata, and just name this Default Mesh. Default 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 mesh here and then just click apply and okay uh, and then what we're going to do instead is because every time that we create a new mesh it's going to appear below so we'll just play around with some of these values just to show you what effects they have on the, the actual spacing of the meshing elements so instead of 50 uh, we're going to put this to 100 so the default edge length uh, so basically works with the resample outline here. So what it's going to do is it's going to take our outline and it's going to resample it at 100 meters instead of every 50 meters, which is what it was at before. Uh, so that's going to basically give us a coarser mesh further away from the channel meshes, uh, which you'll be able to see here. And it goes a lot quicker because there's fewer elements that it actually needs to calculate. And you can see that already the mesh is done. So OK, and then we can call this, uh, we'll just go into Properties and rename this file. Um, we'll call it 100 meter uh, resample. And then go Apply, OK, and drag and drop that onto here. And you can see that it has a, there's a coarser mesh further away. So if we compare that with the default mesh, uh, you can see that they, the overlapping here, like if I just remove if I make this invisible for the moment, you can see that the default mesh is a lot um, closer than the the 100 meter resampled mesh. So what that allows us to do is basically create fewer elements further away from the from the regions of interest. So we want to have a certain level of like refinement within the river itself, but further away we want less refinement. So we can use that tool to basically reduce the amount of uh, refinement in regions where we don't expect there to be much water or we don't expect there to be uh, much flow. Uh, so that's that's one use of this. Uh, so just for the moment, I'm just going to remove these from the 2D view and then go back into the Baxter tutorial. Um, Baxter tutorial mesh, go to properties, and uh, we're just going to 
change the edge growth ratio. So basically what the edge growth ratio does is it says that between each segment you can only have like the, the growth of the line that connects two nodes. It can only be a certain ratio to the smallest segment on that node. So if it's 1.2 it's not going to grow that much but if we make this to say 1.5 we're going to get a f even greater spacing between elements and we'll have fewer nodes in our domain in total. So we'll just go apply OK and then we'll go to properties and rename this um, um, spacing or edge growth edge growth 1.5 so we'll just go apply OK and then have a look at that as well. And you can see that uh, if we compare this to the 100 meter default, uh, if you can see the overlapping, uh, basically it just grows a lot quicker so we get even fewer elements. And if you go into properties here, you can see the number of elements for the mesh. So if you go to data, you can see the total number of nodes in the mesh as well as the total number of elements. So this is for an edge growth of 1.5. If we compare it to the 100 meter, which had an edge growth of 1.2, uh, you can see that we have gr more elements in the, uh, the 1.2 one here. Uh, so that just shows you that by playing with these parameters, you can change the total number of elements in the domain. And by reducing the number of unnecessary elements, in your domain you, you increase the time that it takes you or you decrease the amount of time that it takes for the simulation to reach steady state or the solution that you're looking for. So generally what you want to do is put elements that are elements in regions of the flow that are most interesting um, and especially you want to refine areas where you're expecting to have large gradients in the flow. So by playing around with these parameters you can optimize your mesh uh, in terms of resolving any spatial gradients in your velocity field, as well as reducing the number or the amount of simulation that time that it's going to take to produce a result. So I uh, just thought that would be good to show you. Uh, you can play around with that. And uh, in the next video, we're going to be looking at how to use the 2D interpolator to interpolate the, the, the metric data. So this topology data onto the mesh itself, and then that gets used within Telemac. Uh, when you run the hydrodynamic model. So see you in the next.